Today, we're going to talk about the new Fates Voyage expansion, the champions Janna, Nila, and Volibear, how they landed, and our general opinions of the new content, and of course, how it compares to the last expansion. We're also going to discuss the best decks in the game so far, and a couple of standout cards for me and Marshall, because of course, I'm not alone. How are you doing today, Marshall? I am doing very well, thank you. Uh, I'm enjoying the meta, surprisingly. It's yeah. a it's a nice refresh from what we had from the last expansion, personally. But we'll get into that later into the podcast. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing very well. Uh, so our listeners on Spotify or wherever can't see it, but we are rocking the uh, LOR Report merch. We got the, the little chip icons on a hat and a t-shirt. They're beautiful. Marshall, they're, they're available where exactly? They are available at the LORreport.com slash store. There you go. All right. Uh, make sure to uh, check them out before they leave the store because they <laughs> they are Halloween themed. So I'm going to assume they're not around for winter. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. General opinions so far about the expansion. I'm just I'm just going to say I think it's a banger expansion. I think compared to the last one, which again, we'll go into later. It's not even like close as far as playability and how powerful the champions are. Uh, personal favorite so far for me is Janna, but as far as actually building decks goes, it's probably Volibear. What do you think? Interesting. Uh, yeah, I surprisingly I like them all equally. Cool. I've um, if you've seen some of the posts that I've done on Twitter, mm -hmm. I made a climb from platinum to diamond with Nila MF, okay. and then I started climbing a bit with Galio Volibear. Um. I've been testing Janadex on the side, and she's very meta present at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's like, she's strong. I'm just trying to find a deck that I enjoy her playing her in. And um, yeah, I just think that they're incredible champions. Like, I don't think anyone can argue that they failed with the champions design this expansion. They're very clear on what they want to do. And it's not even the fact that you can be like, hey, I'm just going to play a Volibear deck. There's like five Volibear decks. Like, <laughs> There's so much variety. This is what people like. They're like, oh, I want to play Rek'Sai. It's like, well, you've only got one Rek'Sai deck. But if you want to play Volibear, there's five of them. You've got you've got your choice. It's crazy, right? Because I feel like Volibear really felt like it was going to be the new Field of Rush. It's like, okay, I'm playing Failure at Ramp. Uh, this is the one powerful thing that I'm doing. I'm getting to turn nine fast, which was also when you played Field of Rush because it was nine plus three spell mana for 12. And then I start winning the game. For Volibear, it's like so surprising that the whole, just the one fact that we got Ram card for specifically Titanic units, and then also the synergy with Elemental cards, it's, it's it's like mind blowing that a champion like this that is so expensive actually finds a home with a above 50% win rate in multiple decks. I I really, I like, I actually recorded with Raran before this video this afternoon and I showed him the card and he was like, Holy shit, dude, I got to check out these cards. He was so excited <laughs> just because I told him like, yeah, these cards, they are not like uh, like a one deck kind of deal. They are very flexible. And I really I can't like just give my props to the developers for this set, because again, um, the one thing that I keep going back to is it was during Rising Tides. We have a three champion triangle that they kept talking about. I think Ruben Zoom mentioned it multiple times. It was Gangplank. Sejuani and Swain, and they were supposed to be like, they all work well in decks with each other, like Gangplank and Swain had like synergy in a way, Sejuani, Gangplank, obviously, Sejuani, Swain, they were all supposed to work with this whole plunder effect. I, I got that, but it still felt like, no, that Swain, Gangplank, there's just no point, it just, there's just decks that do it better. But right now, like maybe Nila, Volibear isn't quite there, but there are builds for other Volibear decks. And I feel like Janna Volibear makes sense. Janna Nila obviously makes sense. So it's like this triangle and the supporting cards, they really feel like they work together because of this elemental tag. And it's, it's not like limiting either. Yeah, the uh, when you were just saying there about the, the build water deck, there's mm -hmm. not one. I, I don't know if you've been, you've been on and off for the past couple of days. Yeah. The, um, the, there is a deck, it's Alawi Volibear, and it's very, very strong. It's... It's a mid-range deck. It's, I'm going to mm -hmm. play Tentacle, I'm going to attack. Yeah. And Tentacles go big, Alawi goes big, you do a lot of damage, Volibear levels. It's a decent deck. It's it's actually incredible how much variety you can have from cards in this expansion. It's like, it's one of the reasons why I think this expansion has done so well, which is also why I think the servers are on fire. But 
I, I um... we don't know that for sure, but it does feel that way. I think with the Gianna rework too, the way she looks as compared to her Lee counterpart, I think people got really excited and. Okay, I'm I, I, my part in the community, the way I upload my videos, I look at views, right? That's like my indicator for how well some stuff lands and some stuff doesn't land, maybe. Now, there are other factors, of course. Uh, it's sad that Grappler uploads for TFT. I think he's doing well, though, with it. Mogwai also not uploading anymore. Uh, I, I miss their content because they were the people that I looked up to when I started making content. But because they aren't here, maybe my views are also a little bit inflated. On the other hand, though, I think a big part is also just Janna looks awesome. Volibear looks freaking amazing. Nila is Nila. Uh, she's not quite on that same level. Like, Janna probably wouldn't be very exciting, too, if it wasn't for the rework. But Volibear, dude, people love big chonkers, and I do, too. It makes sense. Yeah, the um, I think out of all of the decks and all of the champions, Nila's the one that has the, the least play rate because i think there's less variety with her yeah um well i mean she's still there's still decks that you can try there's she's not bad at all yep. uh her win condition is very aggro in a way if you play her with janna um so the people that like to go wide go hit the nexus fast she she can do that and people are going to enjoy that but i definitely think the volley bear is the one that people are uh, wanting mm -hmm. to play the most people like you said people like the big chunky units and especially with the fact that it's like hey he gives everything overwhelm mm -hmm. i think that's the the bonus that helps the deck yeah and uh, the synergy is also really clever when you start thinking about it like when he attacks on his level two he also hits that relentless storm again overwhelm does more damage because of it it's just ah, oh, it's just Beautiful design. I just love how it works together. And I feel like we haven't had that in a little while. Like as cool as Jack and Set and Samira were in that one expansion, which I also felt like was a very successful expansion. We missed that with the Nidalee expansion and the Poor King and the Nico. They were a lot more straightforward. But here, everything that elemental tag, God, it's it's incredible. I really it feels so good to deck build again. And yeah, again, that hasn't been there for at least three months, maybe longer. Yeah, and uh, just I just want to just want to move on from from Volibear. If we if we move to the Janna card, right. I think this Janna card is a it's pretty good. So there's two things about this Janna card which make you can tell it's a good card. Mm -hmm. Alan returned to play some LOR, <laughs> and I I was like Alan's playing LOR, and I watched him yesterday, and he was playing Janna decks all day. He was like this this card slaps. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, who knew that if you just drew cards, you can bring Bring players back from the dead. <laughs> Alan was like, I'm going to TFT. So like, re revive yourself. Come over back over. And he was enjoying himself. He, obviously, he was still trying to learn some of the new cards. Mm -hmm. But like, he, he was looking at this and he, he was genuinely having a good time in some of these games. Um, I think Janna is very well designed. Um, yeah. She's definitely a card that you need to remove the moment that you play her. Like, if you're the opponent and you see a Janna, you're like, ooh, mm -hmm. I kind of need to answer that before they get, get online. But I think she is a very well designed card yeah i think i think jenna works really well when you when you, what you just mentioned that you have to remove her on two different levels like first of all she's a four minus two four basically like that's her stats that doesn't really get better until she levels when she levels like a three five elusive is really going to to remove extra draw extra discounts yeah you can't let her level because you will probably lose the game so you have that time to remove her because Piltover and, you know, Buildswater, which she likes to be played in, can't protect our units. So if you remove Janna on the turn she's played or a little bit later, if you can't quite commit to that just yet, you'll probably be okay. But on the other hand, you can also remove her the turn she is played to stop that discount on the cards that they draw the next turn. I think that that just feels really good, right? Just like, oh, I'm just going to remove her now so my opponent doesn't potentially get like their pop off turn right after. And I also want to say that as like the content creator that I am, again, with the off meta decks that I built, up drafting is like my favorite mechanic ever. Just playing greedy, stupid cards and being able to get rid of them for, you know, a couple of turns and then draw them again later with a discount is so freaking nice. I will put Mariam and Janna in like every single deck I can. Even if they're not the most exciting, they make the decks more consistent when they can pop off. And that's that's amazing. Yeah, the, the thing with Janna that... If you look at the card, you're like, okay, it's a 4 mana 2-4. Mm -hmm. If you play Janna and it doesn't get removed, she's not a 2-4. She's a 2-2. Two, two. She's a 2 mana 2 Sorry, she's a 2 mana 2-4 two, instead of a 4 mana 2-4 because of the discount. Yeah. But even then, she's discounting another card. She's technically 1 mana. So it's like, okay, if you can make your opponent force an answer for Janna, you're probably fine because you're like... She's, it's okay. The game time that you're going for, she doesn't need to be on the board. But yeah, if Janna gets that discount, 
you are in for a world of pain. She is discounting herself to one mana, basically. Mm -hmm. it, it's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game if she's kept on the board, but very well designed. The decks yeah. that are currently being played have extremely high win rate. The highest deck at the moment is Janna Samira. It's got a 55.9% win rate. It's doing very well. Yeah, yeah. But even then, if Janet does level, which sometimes just happens, uh, it doesn't feel like an auto loss. It feels like, ooh, I'm in trouble. My opponent is clearly going to do whatever they're doing, but a lot more powerful. But it's not like, yeah, it's not like, hey, I just lost the game, which was often the case with Samira because of the way her decks, you know, played and they would rally with Elusives or with Akshan and Absolver and Eternal. And I felt like that was a little bit more frustrating, but I'm, I'm sure we'll get to the Samira issue later. Um, if it can be considered an issue, um, I think it's... I think I think it's uh, it's getting dangerous. People are getting a little bit frustrated with a car being this good for this long, and I get that. But I still really enjoy her design. But again, we'll uh, we'll talk about that after Nila, maybe, unless you have more to say about Janna right now. No, nope, not really. Janna, just a really good uh, card, as you said. She's extremely versatile. You go in any deck, and you go three times Janna, three times um, Miriam. And mm -hmm. you're you're gonna have a very fun time. Honestly, yep. excellent design. S T for design for cards. Agreed. It's uh it's one of my favorite releases, and it's not even like it's not even <clears throat> thumbnail material as I like to call it right now. It's not a card <laughs> I'm gonna put on a thumbnail like Secret Keeper or Howling Abyss every time and people get excited. That's that's not what she is, but she does make the decks more playable, and that's that's really all we care about in the long run. Um yeah. all right, so Nila. I <laughs> I think it's so interesting that Nila is like the the champion that has probably like landed the worst out of all these champions, and she's still like super cool. It, it feels oh, yeah. like Nila is the filler champion of this expansion. Like last expansion, we had Poro King. Uh, I, I think I think it's fair to say that Poro King was the filler champion, and before that, it was probably Jack. Jack. Yeah. I, yeah, but he still had the coin synergy with set I, I don't know I, I feel like those champions didn't, might not really have had a filler champion as much as this one even Nila not really filler champion but see he's just the one that I feel like players are the least excited about and if you, you're gonna have like one champion that is just significantly less popular than the other two I'm pretty glad it's one like this like I can still build like a million Nila decks and have a good time with it that slipstream play pattern like play with Bard play with portals play with Janna for the intended play with the ship the boat played with the, the the monkey or whatever the the dedicant of the challenge that hasn't really seen any experimentation play with Brash play with Joyana there, there's so many things you can still do and that's for you know a, a champion like this a two and a two three it's insane to me yeah, the, the stats for this card alone, 2 mana 2-3 with Brash, is just very good on its own. Nothing nothing amazing. And then the, the, the text for just creating a slipstream in the top 6 cards is very good. The, uh, the, the fact that you can attack twice maybe, and you slipstream and then pull another slipstream, if you do that in the later game when you've got no cards left, you are drawing a lot of cards. Yeah. Um, especially when we got introduced to the new uh, temp uh, the Sunken Temple. Fleeting cards, just they're not fleeting anymore. It's in the design of Sunken Temple is incredible. It's yeah. a high cost, it's five cost, which is quite high for a landmark. Um, but the effect of like, okay, everything in my hand is going away, so it's kind of like an RNG effect. Am I gonna high roll with my thing? Everything's potential, well, everything that I did have in my hand is now cost one less, mm -hmm. and you have the intended effect of cards like Nila don't have a downside to their cards, which is a very, very good. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that they decided to implement it like that, where fleeting is no longer really a downside if you're willing to commit to a five mana landmark in that deck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. I love this expansion so much. I feel like there's just unending deck building. Um, again, for me as a YouTuber speaking, my views have also skyrocketed with this expansion. Um, I just love Rune Terra, and I love seeing it do well. And I really feel like this expansion has just been an absolute slam dunk so far. It's, it's a proper ten out of ten expansion for me. And I was really excited about the last expansion too, uh, the Heart of the Huntress, because the hype season, the reveal season, was one of the best I think they've ever done. We had the song, we had the Nidalee bust that they were sculpting like live, and we had to guess what it was. It, it was all like, even the theming, right? Like the um, the jungle expansion, you know, the random Poro King there too. But sure, that's still a, that was still a cool champion. I liked it, but the deck building... Uh, the issue I have with it, and I guess we can slowly move on to the next part of this, where we compare this expansion to the last one, my issue with that regarding deck building is we add the Poro King and some Fraudulent cards. And that is just like, if I'm building a Poro King deck, I'm playing Poros. If I'm building a Nico deck, I'm playing subtypes. And it feels like it's, it's kind of like 
a random subtype soup. There's no real synergy between those cards. There's like the cat, the four mana cat that gets like uh, stats for it. There's the Glacial Saurian, which did do really well. The five mana five four that gives the top three allies in your deck plus one plus one and draws one if you have a different subtype. That's cool, right? But you don't need to build a Nico deck for that. And I thought that was a real miss. It, it doesn't. It didn't feel super satisfying to me to build a subtype deck um, because it just it, it comes down to the same thing. Nidalee, on the other hand, is uh, if I had to put Nidalee in this expansion, I would actually say C is the least interesting one. I, I think even Nila is probably more interesting than Nidalee at this point because of the way the ambush cards are made. I think the payoff for ambush is not super satisfying, where the all-terrain trooper is good, the avenging Vastaya is good in different decks, and then there's Nidalee as just like a three and a half mana, however you want to call, call uh, count ambush, uh, five, three quick attack unit. That is good, but it's not, again, it's not satisfying to build your deck around that effect. Um, it's it's not great content for someone like me, personally. Yeah, the, um, the, the I think the one reason why the last expansion didn't hit with everyone was only because the deck building was really limited. It was yeah. as if they said, hey, we're going to release Lurk three times, but it's not all Lurk, they're all different decks. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, what if I don't want to play Lurk? And it's like, oh, well, you don't have a deck. We'll give you, like, maybe two cards here. Like, Ionia got two cards. Demacia got a couple of cards. It's like, until you mm -hmm. get your expansion, you're just going to have to wait. And, like, with this expansion, every region got something. Yeah. Like, we'll go on to the other cards later, because I've, I've got quite a lot of cards that we want to talk about for Sandout. Mm -hmm. But, like, the last expansion was just like, hey, if you don't enjoy Poro King, and you don't enjoy Nico and you don't enjoy Nidalee, there's not much else you can do. Because most of them were self like I would say all of them were self-contained. Yeah. Poro King was, you're playing Poros. Nico was, you're playing subtypes. You couldn't play a card that wasn't really subtypes because there was no point. It wasn't getting anything in the deck. Yeah. And then Nidalee was like, okay, you're forced into playing Ambush. There was the there was the odd few decks that were like the Nidalee and Galio deck that saw a little bit of traction, but like it wasn't massive. You, there wasn't a lot of deck building available. Um, yeah, I think that the designs for some of the champions were quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, like overall, like you said, the the reveal season and how Riot handled everything, I think was really good. Um, when it comes down to actual game balance, I think they, they they struggled a bit with that one. And I think maybe it's not a fault of Riot themselves. I just think it was the, the decks that they just decided that, hey, these cards are going to play in. Um, became an issue for everyone else that were like, hey, I don't want to play that deck. What are you offering me? And then you were like, oh, you're only offering me two cards. Yeah. It, it did kind of flop towards the end. Um, when we speak about the variety set for last season, I don't think we've had anything uh, th that high. That yeah. variety set for last season, incredible. Yeah. The expansion was down here. Variety set was 10 times better. I the, agree. the cards that they released were insane. We got the, the landmark. We got my boy, Balen. Uh, <laughs> like, it's just incredible. Like, you look at the cards that we got and you're like, huh? Why was the expansion so bad? And then you're giving us these now. Like, oh, it was just incredible. The, um, yeah, so here we go. So you've got the, uh, Divine Draft was a bit of a dodgy one, but some people were making mm -hmm. it work in Seraphine decks. The, yeah. the Storm Raptor didn't see much play, but you're not always going to have cards that hit. Uh, Tidal Invocation. It was it was a card that people were running. They um that people were like this is a cool card. They were gonna build it into BB decks. This expansion, not realizing that this was gonna get elemental and yeah. this was gonna become a good card. Uh, the next card we have was the the pro proliferated proliferating dark wraith mm -hmm. which was just a meme card. People loved this card. It was like it might not be good, but if I can get my combo off, it's great. Yeah. Um, the banquet hall. Oh, we don't, we don't talk about the banquet hall. <laughs> Next, ah, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister Thrift, your favorite. Yeah. Like, just a good card. Like, people enjoy playing him. He might not be the best. People just added him because it was like, hey, he, he does value. It's funny to have him. Yeah, he's a gentleman. Why wouldn't I put him in my deck? Uh, this one. Then we have this card. Like, how are we gonna have a failed expansion? And then they come out like two months down the line and go, oh yeah, here's Cosmic Call. Like this card defined the eternal meta because of how good it was it's still seeing a little bit of play in standard now but because there's quite a lot of celestial cards that aren't available in standard but like this card is still popping off in standard games it's like these are meta defining cards yeah. that made it so that regions like targon for the expansion i'm just gonna look now what did they get they got uh star-crossed lovers 
not a great card. And they got Age of Dragons, which was countered by quite a lot of the Deny that was running around. So yeah. it was like, okay, if you want to play any of the new Tyagon cards, you can't really do anything. And then they print this two months after. It's insane. Like, yeah. What a what a great design for a card. Yeah. So um, I, I like this this variety set was just such a huge hit for me too. I was really worried about the last variety sets, especially with them releasing right before the Eternal set, where I thought, okay, if we're moving into the Eternal set, is there really any chance that these cards can actually see the light of day? And I don't know if they if they right devs did this on purpose. I'm gonna assume that they did. I'm pretty sure that they did. But it was like, okay, we're releasing these cards into the inter or at the time of the Eternal Season, let's also buff their archetypes a little bit. And I think that really helps. Uh, even if clearly like Invoke was way overtuned, I still think it's smart that they did that so we don't have another Nasus, Poppy, Draven meta or whatever. And what the, the one thing that worried me the most about that was I can't play the game. I can't play the Eternal meta, the Eternal Season, if these are the decks that are around and they just beat me before I get to play anything or do anything that I want to do. As somebody who plays off meta, that, that just never works. But with Cosmical, as strong as it is, my opponent actually does let me play the game. It's a little bit slower, and the, the one thing that I might have to remove is like Zoe or something, right? Like that is the threat. I have to get rid of the Zoe before she gets spell shield or whatever. And that's like that's 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 fair. I can I can deal with that. And then on turn five, they take a turn off so they can set up their powerful combo. And then yeah, I mean there's a high chance they win because it is so powerful, but it's not like I can build a greedier deck that will sometimes just win against it, and that feels really, really good. I uh, I think this was an absolute banger of a Eternal Season, and we went straight into, uh, well, a banger so far for an expansion. Yeah, um, like, we, we got the, the Valley card. We talked about this quickly. This card has been... Uh, it got released, people found out it was good, then people found out it was glitched, and you could forever stun it, you could forever frostbite it, which I believe has been fixed, and I... Okay. I've made a deck today and tried this. The only issue is that I think we should mention the Explorer cards now. Oh, because yeah. I think these cards are quite insane, to say the least. Like, they're meta-defining on what you can play, and they're quite good. So, for people that don't know, we were introduced to five new cards, which you can see just, just over to the left here. Uh, we have the Pioneer for Demacia and Freljord. The, oh, sorry, they're all called Pioneer. No, 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 there's two of them. So we have the Scho Scholarly Pioneer, which is Demacia and Freljord. The Portal Pioneer, which is Bandle City Ionia. The Spectral Surveyor, which is Targon and Shadow Isles. Yeah. Then you have the Armed Acquisitioner, which is Noxus and Sharima. And the Octo Adventurer, which is Piltover and Zorn and Bilgewater. And that means every region has access to these cards. Like, flat out. If you want to run any of the Explorer cards, you can run them. Yeah. And the what they bring is insane. There's not the, oh, there's a landmark deck in the meta i'm going to run a landmark removal card no you just slap this in your deck and it's either going to be i'm going to heal two or i'm going to remove something that's a threat that's yeah. how i see these cards they're absolutely insane i can see maybe a nerf being pushed to some of these cards just because of how strong they are i i think the main thing is i think that landmark card could potentially go to three the destroyer landmark for two yeah. mana slow mm -hmm. i could see that too. very very good um it kind of forces landmarks out of the meta, especially with how prevalent they are at the moment. Um, but these cards are like, they very quickly change some of the region identities that were like, hey, some regions just can't answer some stuff very well. And one of one for me was Demacia cannot answer landmarks very yeah, no, well. And we don't, we don't have access to heals. And we don't really have ways to stop. Well, we have some silences, but like there's not ways to like deal with overwhelm or like deal with equipments that were like, I had to tech this and it was like, hey, I'm just going to run a three mana two three that has Challenger. It's a very good outline on its own. Mm -hmm. And I get to choose one of these things depending on what the game is. And absolutely insane. Like, this is what I mean. Like, you're building decks and the, this expansion just brings variety. It's not, okay, I have a Nico deck, I have a Poro King deck, I have a Nidalee deck, and they're all their self like defined things. Like, you can splash this card into nearly every single deck in the game and you would not be upset with it. Yeah, the, the ability to like tech for the meta, whether it's destroying equipment, destroying a landmark, disabling keywords, or the more general, I want to heal too. That's like that that you will find a use for. The other three are a bit specific. It's like Pantheon is a problem. Maybe you want to tech an explorer to go for the blunder that disables keywords this round and next round so you can actually set up for it. 
destroy equipment for their Orn decks, destroy a landmark if we have another Vault fiasco in the meta where it's just like, oh, it's just being ruled by this solitaire deck that plays a landmark and they become unbeatable, right? Suddenly you have a way to beat them. And yeah, I think these are fantastic additions to the game to just make deck building a little more smooth where you don't have to worry as much about not having an answer to a certain archetype. Uh, I, I'm expecting to see these around <laughs> forever, basically. If they are needed, you will slot them in. And I, I think they're they're balanced around that fairly well. I uh, Right now, I don't see an issue for it. However, if in the future we do get like a, um, a landmark-centric deck, like maybe right now, even with the Sunken Temple, is doing some of that, uh, it, we could run into more issues, but right now, I, I don't really see a problem with them at all. I think it's really good. Yeah. I can, I can, if we have like a prediction area, I'd like to make a prediction that in the next balance patch, which is scheduled for in three weeks, uh -huh. I think we might get vaults back to four mana. I think it's going to be one balance patch, it goes from five to four, then the next one it's going to go from four to five, <laughs> and then the next one we're going to see it go back from five to four, only because they printed these cards. I, I can hands down see it. I could, I could kind of see it, but uh, for, for some reason, I still hope they don't do it, because if a deck has been around for like so many months, I'm like, yeah, just give it a rest. Which they should also do with Heimer Jays. Um, I think that is a balanced deck, but it's been around for an insanely long time, and I'm tired of it. I, I, I don't see why one single deck should be around for that long. I think the play pattern is boring. It's uh, what, what annoys me is obviously the Epic Scrap Traption. I think that card is unacceptable. Um, it's past turn one, past turn two, and then for some reason play a 6-6 six, six with Brash on turn three. That alone is enough to beat a ton of decks, and then for the Jace Heimer play, it's like, oh, this is just a thing I do. This is just like, you know, uh, I can I can do that. Don't really care about it. It helps my Jace. Later on, it can help my Heimer Dinger. I activate my Axe Handler. It's whatever, man. It's whatever. Deal with the 6-6 six, six, and I'm just going to keep doing my thing. And it's so annoying. That it's just like, it's just like ah, casually 6-6 six, six with Brash. Not even the point of my deck. That's not even my strongest form yet. It, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, it, It's definitely... I, so the, the, Heimer, the Heimer Jace deck is a deck that I have notoriously not enjoyed mm -hmm. um i definitely think it does require a nerf i was quite surprised when we got the balance patch for yeah. the variety set which hit standard and we never saw a nerf potentially we might see one now because they they do work back a couple of weeks mm -hmm. so there's the potential that maybe they they listen to some of our feedback and they're like hey we're gonna give maybe one nerf i think something what they might do as well is they might do a nerf where it's just a placebo nerf like it doesn't really do anything mm -hmm. but the play rate goes down so yeah. that you don't see the deck as much i think that's what they should Perfect. do yeah um but yeah we'll see because i had this take i don't know if you saw, saw my post on twitter yesterday or was it yesterday or today the days are blurring together mm -hmm. i said that samira needs a nerf i said yeah. that samira has been way too good for way too long i said She's been best, basically meta relevant since Glory and Navori. And like Glory and Navori, she was like, she was meta prevalent. Like, mm -hmm. it was Samira time. And she's just, she, I just think she does way too much still. And I'm like, if you don't answer her in like, for example, the Janna deck that was being floated around, it's like, these are, they, she, she's just too got a two mana. Like, if you're passing on one and you play Samira on two, your opponent just cannot play a card with two. To yeah. health. Like it's just unless you you have an answer and you're like, oh, I'm gonna surprise you with a big blowout. It's like, yeah, but like, okay, you killed one Samira, there's gonna play another, and then until that you don't have an answer, they'll play Samira, and then all of a sudden they'll just pop up. Like, okay, I answered two Samira. If it only got one more, and then you will somehow lose the game still to her. Um Yeah. I said personally, I think they need to break the flavor um and make it so her level up is a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I said, I know it ruins the card quite a lot because you have her leveling up her grades and it goes from D to S. But I was yeah, like, yeah. I think for gameplay wise, if you're going to hit this card, you're going to do it to the level up condition. And yes, it does break the card a little bit, but this card is still very good. I think the design overall, very cool. I liked it personally when the, the card could give challenger to another card. It was a mm -hmm. very toxic and it was very good for like building decks around her because I remember building a Samira Ash deck and giving my Ash Challenger. Yeah, that's cool. So that yeah. you could you could build a fun deck. It wasn't great, but it was fun. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just this card very good. 
literally been top of the meta since since the release. And like you said, I think there's times where the card can be just a little bit too strong for a little bit too long, and you can just put them on the bottom shelf for a little bit. It doesn't have to be a mega nerf. Just make 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 a move it to do, like tier two deck. Uh, just like that personally if we if we could please <laughs> <laughs> I, I i agree with you i think she does need to get get hit uh because it's just been around for too long the problem i have with a lot of the nerf suggestions and i don't know if yours would necessarily fix that is that right now even she is just used as like this two two quick attack that can do a thing on two and then just gets like one or two flyers it can either be burn damage it can either be like you know board control where your opponent can't play anything and I don't know if that would necessarily fix it. So I, I think a nerf like that wouldn't even have like the desired result because we're not really seeing Samira decks anymore, right? Where we had Fist Samira, which still very much played for a level up and just getting maximum value from Samira, so to say. Um, but even right now in the Janna deck, it's just like, yeah, this is a 2-2 that will sometimes kill something with the Challenger, sometimes just deal one or two damage with their Flyer. And that's, you know, that's, it's good, but it's also less cool. So I, I'd like Samira to, yeah, uh, stay cool, maybe uh, be a little better in the plunder decks that she was printed with. Uh, maybe f bring back the challenger to other allies so you can have like cool faded stuff or fairies or whatever. Tune it down in other areas so it doesn't get completely degenerate. Um, it's my take on Samira. I really, I really, really like the card, but it is clearly too powerful. Uh, but again, if, if any cards get printed like this, and it opens up this much deck building and like flexibility for decks. I'm all for it. I'm not gonna complain. I, I think that is important. I think C is probably like the the champion that I've gotten the most mastery points on in a short amount of time compared to like anything ever. Because I just keep going back to her because like yeah, this is actually just like a pretty interesting concept that I can use Samira for. So I I want to see her nerfed, uh, but not into unplayability. Yep, I'd agree with that. All right. Uh, so I I think, yeah, if we move on to the meta now, go go on to a bit more of a... Let's not let's talk, not talk about nerfs. Let's talk about what's good. Let's talk about what, what's doing good at the moment. Yeah, um, uh, I think it'll be interesting if we look at new decks. So we can just like a glance over some of the strongest decks right now, which which is Jarvan Nar. This was very popular and strong right before the expansion. It's just a ramp into Warren of the Tribes type of deck with Jarvan as the elite cataclysm to get like, you know, attacks with your overall more big stuff. Um, very, very powerful, kind of bland and straightforward. Same with Jarvan Alawi. I'm extremely surprised, by the way, to see two Jarvan decks in the top two. This is just a tentacle deck with Jarvan as like, uh, you know, pops out of your hands because you already have big stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah You've Jar seen this one. So secretly, Jarvan's just broken. I don't understand how <laughs> he's gone so long without an earth. Like, that, he's definitely going to get to a point where he's, just, he's in the deck and he does too well but like yeah. he's kind of the samira to like damasia it was like hey if you can afford him put yeah. him in yeah. he does exactly what he wants to do and then he'll die and then he'll come back out of deck and he'll do the same thing again i think like, it's kind of cool yeah but it is probably too powerful but it's like silent powerful much like akshan has been like secretly a little bit sleeper slash broken for so long but it's not frustrating i feel the same way yeah. about jarvan it's like if you're open attacking and you're instantly spending six minutes you have no say uh, say in that's like yeah, i don't know that's probably fine yeah. all right uh, <laughs> uh, i don't even know what to say about this one this is timo elusives with a flavor of burn you know pilt over this time uh i don't know man it's it's really sad that this deck is allowed to be good uh i, I say allowed but what i mean is it, it's weird that it that we as players allow it to be good because i feel like it should be so easy to counter but for some reason it keeps winning yeah i am um... I, I was playing the elites today, and I was like, oh yeah, look, I ran into this deck. I had three blocking badger bears in hand. My opponent double top decks, shock blast, and kills them after one block. I'm like, hey, yeah. this game's rigged. I'm like, <laughs> they're rigging it so that the elusive players can win. There's no way. But yeah, yeah no, this, um, I feel like if this was as meta dominant as it's starting to feel, people are just going to start to build to counter it, and then it'll die off because it's very easy to counter, I feel. Like, you yeah. just, oh, look, a unit, kill it. Oh, look, a unit, kill it. And then eventually they're only gonna have burn, and it won't be enough to kill them, like, to kill the opponent. <laughs> you um, you're like you look at the cards here: Tebo, Acorn, Navori Blade Scout, Fastine Disciple, Green Glaive, Sting Officer, Shadow Assassin. That's like that's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. That's twenty-one units with one health, and they have three Wuju styles to protect them. That's it. You, you you drop one Maker Rain, you say pow 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 once, and they lose the game basically. Because <laughs> I, I think this is actually why Jana and Nila is like kind of based. 
because they, they have like this brash to hit them they have make it rain to just stop them in their tracks and it feels good it feels nice yeah the uh i can definitely see if like i said if this deck starts to pop off you can see the win rate there starting to be a little bit high um yeah. but yeah we'll, we'll see that get here and then surprisingly at number four we have swain lawi swain got nerfed from 12 to 16 but apparently still the fourth highest win rate in the deck when we're recording this i think that's just an Alawi thing really i think Alawi, even with like the smallest amount of synergies he can find in any deck is like okay guess we'll play the tentacle package because it is just that consistent and good yeah the all right honestly i think we need to talk about the, the card that actually makes this deck good watchful idol is a card mm. that is very strange i feel like if you're going to nerf this card there's only one thing you can do and it's you make it a zero three and you make it so it deals one to itself rather than two. Ah, oh that's actually really oh that's clever i like so that yeah. you you still get the, the the effect um but it doesn't level swain as much and Wait, then you maybe so you can yeah. you, then, then you maybe you can revert swain back to his 12 um because uh, so by attack and aikido like two of the like competitive players for like deck building and like explaining stuff they went on their podcast they were talking about this and they were saying oh yeah you basically just win the game if you have idol and you lose the game if you don't have idol mm -hmm. and it's like okay well idol's the issue with this deck then like it's yeah. not tentacles it's not anything else is do you have idol on one congratulations you've won the game I, and... the nerf you suggested i think is i haven't heard it uh I, I i also felt like this was like it was this and tentacle slam as like the most powerful card in this deck most likely but the fact you say make it a zero three and it deals one it is like so clever on so many levels it stops being as good with twain it also means that if you ping it for one it will be one less spawn it will be one less trigger because if you deal one to it as a zero five that yeah i mean it doesn't even matter right yeah, yeah it, it, does, it, 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 it does it does it for does one matter. but like yeah you could ping it there's, there's ways to counter it it doesn't always yeah. give you because it feels like this always gives you a three three right now yeah um but yeah we'll, we'll just see how this develops uh if they need to hit it again he probably won't hit idle but maybe 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 but yeah. i think that's definitely the the problem card no no it's a good point uh okay so we are at number five which we finally see a new champion this makes sense we can do the expansion you're probably still going to see old decks at the top especially when an expansion comes out with no nerfs or buffs um i'm happy to see that jan is competitive uh, also let's let's uh from now on just look at the new decks and see what their win rate is because i'm, I'm also curious on the other champions how they hold up uh, so this Samira Janadek runs very low to the ground unit like Windborn Mariner, which is the two mana three one that gets discounted by two mana if you've drawn three or more cards. Also has quick attack. Mariam, of course, one of the most powerful cards in the game right now, I feel, as a two mana two three that can updraft, draw you one or refill your spell mana. We got some aggro with the Legion Saboteur. Uh, we got the Exalted Cloud Winder to draw even more. And then we just have a bunch of burn like Blowback. We have Divine Whirlwind, Mystic Shot. I've played against this deck a couple of times, and it really feels like they just, uh, excuse my language, but they pull damage out of their ass every single time. I don't know. I'm like, oh, I'm stable. And it's like, oh, actually, yes, but also no. Uh, uh, Eye of the Storm on an elusive. Here's like two extra damage on the already elusive units. I top deck Blowback. I top deck Divine Ruin, which is also active. It's like, oh, I guess I'm just taking so much damage indirectly. I, I'm slowly dying, and now I am dead. Yeah, I was listening to Aikido talk about mm -hmm. this deck, and he was saying that if you generate on four, most of the time on turn five, you're filling your board. And I was like, what's he on about? And then it's just like you said, the Windborn Mariner is an insane card. You, you look at it like, oh, it's only a two mana three one with quick attack. And then it's, oh, it's also reduced its cost by two. And mm -hmm. all I'm doing in this deck is drawing nearly. So it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're doing quite a lot of wide on this strategy. And they're all quick attack units. So if you don't have something bigger, you're losing your board, then they still have all of their units. And even if you do have a unit that's big enough, they have quite a lot of burn. So you don't really have a unit that's bigger than them. So yeah. 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 I uh I, I was like I was playing the other day with a with the cosmic called Janadek, which is the Targon Piltover version with like uh updraft and just play your cosmic call to win. And I was like, ah, eh, you know, they're not really doing much. Uh on turn five, I think they had like three mana left or something. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. I can probably use my Cosmic Call here, and I was at 20 or 19 HP or whatever. I'll probably be fine. And then they go Windborn Mar Mariner, Windborn Mariner, uh, 
Legion Saboteur, Forge Thief, Legion Saboteur for zero. And they, there's like, for good measure, they throw like a Mystic Shot at my Nexus or something. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just taking like 14 next turn, I guess. <laughs> they just actually fill their board out of nowhere because you don't always expect the updraft discount on a lot of their cheap units and the Winmore Mar Mariner just being zero if they set it up right. It's like, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy how can... fast it goes. Because this deck as well chooses what it updrafts, there's mm -hmm. no there's no temple. They go, okay, I want this unit to be discounted when I play it. I'm choosing this unit to updraft. Um, it's just a very good deck. It does yep. what it wants to do very well. And there's a reason why this uh, the meta is evolving to be big chunky units. Because you need big chunky units to counter this. Um, yeah. Basically as simple as that. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's like a, a tempo burn deck, basically. It's like it, it plays for board with cheap units and then it kills you. But uh, speaking of these chunky units, I don't know if this is the right deck list that we have right now because it's running stuff like Citria Lady of Clouds. Yeah, this, this deck list looks a little bit funky. I'm not going to lie. Let's that see. guy has an 81% win rate with it, though. Oh, no. Uh, this one that. looks right. This looks like uh, yeah, this one looks it's right. a bit better. Okay. Um, Yeah, this is a... Uh, Galio deck, <laughs> my my boy, <laughs> my, my Balan has returned. Yeah. Um, so the the issue is a lot of the Balan decks in Eternal were like, hey, how do we make this relevant in in Standard? And everyone was like, do we really have to play Volley Bear? Because Volley Bear, uh, not Volley Bear, uh, Ude, and Ude is not a great card. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, he generates a stance, and then that's basically all he's there for. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, this deck is a uh, this deck is pretty good. The only thing I agree with, I've seen on my timeline, um, I don't think you're supposed to include Mage Seeker Junior in this list because there's nothing spell wise that costs less than three right now. There's no deck that is running less than three cost spells, so you could cut that. You could probably tech the deck a little bit better. This deck is just good. I like it. It's formidable. It's mm -hmm. as basic as it goes. You play a unit, you attack. You play Balin, you attack. Okay. And then just when oh, gone. Oh, no, I was going to say, Loki, now that you mentioned that about the Mage Seeker Jr., what if, if if it's just, like, three Scrutinizing Sergeant? Has anyone thought about that? Like, that seems nuts with this, no? Scrutinizing at... Sergeant? Why? What are you pulling out from that, then? Does it, like, the Petrocyte Charger, the Badger Bear, the Broadwing, even? I feel like everything is just, like, kind of an... Even the Volier's Prophet? There's a potential to do it, I guess. The, the only issue is you don't want to... Like, as you can see, all of the units are four cost or less in this deck. Yeah. Uh, so the Scrutinizing Sergeant being the five mana 3-3, three, three, it doesn't do that much. I guess it's good for, like, going wide. I guess against the Janna deck it would do good because you can go wide and stop the blocks. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly a way. But I just don't think... If you want to run Junior, maybe run it as a one-of. Um, mm. I don't think it's necessary as a three. Uh, I've been in games against them today twice some someone played him on turn three and i was already five units wide and i was like <laughs> what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah, right yeah yeah no, um, i i played against this deck a bunch i haven't played it myself yet I, i've been loving volibear but i very often i run into the trend where i avoid their best deck and i just play all their sweet decks which you know volibear has a lot of sweet decks surprisingly which uh wasn't expected at first glance it was like this is gonna have one deck maybe two but he's a flexible champion as a nine mana ten ten um, yeah, no, I don't know. It was just like uh, theory crafting a little bit. Seemed like a good card with this many chunky units that are all like three mana. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like that this deck exists. I think it will become like really boring to play against for a lot of players because of the way it functions. It's just like, yep. yeah, one chunky unit at a time. Top it off with Galio and Volibear to win the game. I like it, don't get me wrong, but if this is the kind of deck that we have around for like one or two expansions, it's like, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much over this, but for now, it's a new flavor of Chonky Boys in Dimasha, and I, I'm happy to see it. Yes, I uh, I agree, and I, I can see just below it, we can see see that bottom bottom left over there, we can see you can see another deck that <laughs> yeah. Dimasha is, uh... so mm -hmm. we'll come back to this deck, we won't talk about this now, because we'll talk about standout cards in a moment, uh -huh. we're going to talk about that Defenders of the Sun. Yeah, we I feel like that, that is a tie for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, let's let's go and find the, the Neela deck. Let's go in the search for a Neela. Um, right. So uh, yeah, Heimer Jace here. Uh, this is one more time. I think this deck is so boring. And it's I I find it so... I don't want to say frustrating, but it's just like... <sighs> you know, every time you queue up into it and you see somebody with like 50k mastery points on, on both jam, you're like, really, dude? Even now, you've clearly been spamming his last expansion and here you are again. Whatever, you know, let people do what they enjoy. But I'm like, God, please just nerf it so it's at least not as strong. 
Yeah. I actually have to scroll down a fair amount um, to, f to say here, it's just just to pause. We're on. Uh, well, we don't actually have the number of this, but we're, we're scrolling quite far down, and the win rates are all still over fifty percent. Let's yep. just put that clear. There is quite a lot of decks that are doing well at the moment, like mm -hmm. the, like the Janna one that was there. Just you've just scrolled past. That was the Cosmic Call one that you were playing that you got from Shihu. Yeah. Um, these are all decks that are doing pretty well. Like this is what we want to see. This is a. a, a diverse meta this is exactly what players want yeah even leona diana with the new daybreak card fantastic you love to see it seraphine jana uh, i'm just gonna <laughs> quit gonna move on i want to click on the, the deep one yeah deep also runs two copies of watery grave which i think is really interesting uh poro king at 51 percent, and here we have neela with jinx as her highest win rate deck at 50 well let's say 51 percent I uh, think you might have scrolled past one, but because I can see one, if you click play rate, the the third most highest play rate deck is Janna Neela with a yeah. fifty two. Oh, it's fifty two. Okay, so I might so not I have refreshed it. It's right here at forty nine for me. Ah, uh, oh, maybe it's because you, have you selected over the patch rather than the expansion? Uh, the last seven days. Yeah, I'm on the last two days. That's why. Okay. So you yeah, said fifty two. Yeah, fifty two for the last two, uh, two days. That makes there, sense. It, it got yeah, refined a bit. Fifty-three yes. percent win rate, even Neela. That is, uh, you love to see that actually. That's very nice, clean yeah, looking so, list too. So, like, like we've said at the very start of this, uh, Neela, two mana, two three with Brash. Um, she puts a Slipstream in the deck. A Slipstream is a one mana, draw two cards and give them Fleeting, and basically she's just giving you value. You just attack most of the time that you don't the enemy's not going to have a blocker because how this deck functioned you can ping them down you can force them to trade with other units so that they can't trade into the kneeler so the kneeler is staying on the board creating value and then just when they think they're going to have an answer you played the tide caller everything has brash you're ending the game um yeah and janna is here as we've said before incredibly versatile card or draft the cards that you don't want you draw them later they're discounted this, this deck is a pre-made deck that the, the devs clearly had in mind, and it does well. There, there's no argument there. It's positive win rate. Uh, as I said, it's the third most played deck at the moment um, of yep. the last two days. It's good. I think Neela is the, the worst of the three news champion. Doesn't mean that she's bad. It just means that she is the worst of the three. Uh, yeah. She's still very fun, though. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to have a champion that is the worst out of all the new champions that we got, I'm glad it's something like Neela. That card is extremely fun to play. And I actually love that we have a playable archetype like this for that is clearly like pre-made in a way for the expansion. But on the other hand, you still have both champions super flexible and completely able to just hold their own in different decks, especially Janna. But even Neela, I've, I've been seeing a lot of the uh, the brash deck with jack even also have a just a decent win rate it's nothing like mind-blowing but it i believe last time i checked it was above 50 percent um I'll, I'll, I'll do some uh some searching to see what that is at the moment so neela win rate oh no 45 percent 45 what 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 version is it because uh that I, is Aikido's version. So mm. I didn't realize Aikido was playing it. Uh, there's one from Drizzle. So two very successful players. They both have a negative 50%. Okay. So mm. even the pros are struggling to make this one work. Um, this Maybe it just needs a card extra. Maybe people just need to refine it more. I can definitely see... Brush is one of those keywords where it will definitely pop off. And all you need is a couple of pings. And your opponent is going to be struggling. Um, yeah. So it depends on the meta, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they've not got the cards right. There's definitely potential for a all-in brash deck to exist, uh, but at the moment, this brash deck. Well, we know brash is good because that tide caller card is quite strong. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. And and yeah, the fact it gives you brash, it's like oh, you're getting two attack and brash. Sometimes they can just blow out games. Mm -hmm. Um. So like I said, brash is very strong. Sometimes you just need to find that right spot. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I I love that the card like the tight dancer exists. I'm really happy that we're going back to boats that will actively just be like a. If you don't deal with this and there is the level 2 of the champion on the board, you will lose very fast. And as a 6 mana boat that has that extra text which says, when I would gain fleeting, reveal me instead, it's also really clever. I actually really enjoy that. It wasn't like, it wasn't necessary to put that in the deck, but the devs clearly realized like this is a deck that likes to play cheap cards. And then having one expensive card 
while you're also having a lot of like fleeting effects on your cards because of like the slipstream for example i think it's nice that the tight dancer just has that bit of extra text to make it much more playable in the deck that neela actually wants to be played instead of having anti-synergy with her own card it's uh really really well done yeah i uh the the fleeting bit chef kiss for this card mm. and exactly what it needed just for this specific deck um yeah i'm excited to see where this goes because honestly i think this deck is pretty fair i so agree yeah. i can i can see this maybe if a couple of decks get nerfed this one could rise up so keep an eye on this one i, I feel like this one could uh could go somewhere in a couple of weeks yeah so uh okay let's say on a both a competitive and a f fun skill for you personally how would you rate every champion like the the whole package competitive wise no, but so both I did at the a, same I, time oh at the same time so yeah, how competitive they land for you? and fun mm -hmm. i think janna is the highest mm -hmm. if we had to go like to worst janna is the highest one just because hey i'm gonna play a expensive card hey janna i don't want this now go away we'll, mm -hmm. we'll come back to you another time <laughs> then she draws she just does everything that in package the variety that she can bring she's quite at the top mm -hmm. in the middle i think it's quite fair to say volibear is next he's he also has his variety that he can do um i think the when he's leveled everything having overwhelm and him casting his spell again mm -hmm. is very very good design um I like the formidable deck. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoy that one quite a lot. It, uh, it's funny to see Balin have Overwhelm. It just it's Balin having Overwhelm, so that's funny. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then Neela comes in afterwards, just because there's not that much variety that I personally can have. Like I said, I got to Diamond from Platinum using a Misfortune Neela deck, mm -hmm. which took advantage of the slipstreams to draw my units, cheap units, to go wide and use Champion Strength to kill them that way. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're all quite fun. I did a tier list on my Twitter. If you go to my Twitter, you'll see a tier list um, of champions, what I think were where they were based. Samira was at the top, mm -hmm. and then I put Janna in A tier next to Set, and then at the, in the B tier was Volibear and Neela. Okay, so if you had to give them a rating 1 to 10, the new champions. Janna is a 9. Okay. Volibear is a seven. Neela okay. is a five. Okay. Hmm. I, I think I rate them a little bit higher. I, I personally put Volibear as a nine because he is so flexible as like a, a really, really cool unit that I just love building decks around. Uh, and also, I think he, like every single champion in this expansion makes you feel clever in a way. Updrafting makes you feel clever. Neela Slipstream, the way you use it makes you feel clever. And Volibear, just like playing big... I mean, maybe it doesn't make you feel clever. It just makes you feel like Unga Bunga. <laughs> uh, me Smash. And that's just as good. That's also necessary, just like for the Giga Chats, right? Uh, Volibear, I would give a 9. Janna, I would give an 8 because deck building with her is so satisfying and makes it so much easier. Neela, I would give like a 6 or a 7. I still really, really, really enjoy her. And I, I think I can't, like, I'm willing, I, I'm inclined to take points away from her just because she is the least of the three, but that really doesn't take away from my enjoyment. So six or seven, passing grade, uh, I still love it. Yeah, honestly, they, they've nailed the champions this expansion. And just uh, for, uh, just for the comparison, what about last expansion, the three champions? Oh. I'm being unfair here. Uh, whew. So, see, so like I said, I did the tier list and I said to people, hey, this is what I think where all the champions were. Mm -hmm. And I ranked all of the last expansion champions bad, like mm -hmm. very bad. Yeah. So I did B tier was the Nidalee. Yeah. Then I put in C tier. I put Poro King first, then Nico. Okay. Um. So if we're actually going for ranks, I'd put like actual number values. I'd mm -hmm. put Nidalee at the same level as uh, Neela right now. I'd say that she's a five for me. Okay. Ooh. Poro King Ooh. Poro mm -hmm. King would be a um a four and I would put Nico at a three. Okay. I would put Nidalee as a seven. Uh but <laughs> honestly, I really like Nidalee in Path of Champions. I, I think that is a big reason. Nidalee is some of the most fun I've had in Path of Champions. It is I don't know if you've tried it. It is a bagger. It is really, really fun. Most I fun I've had in like... Champions. It's, it's good. I, I didn't either. I got into it. I would recommend it. I have a great time. And also content for making content for it is really fun. Um, seven for Nidalee. I'm going to give 
Nico a four and poor king a three. Um, I like making poor king, king decks every like once in a month, maybe much like lurk. I love lurk, but it's just it's the kind of thing that you don't really you don't want to play too often. And again, I'm in a different position than most other people. If you're the kind of player that plays like once a day or a couple of hours a week, right? I think Poor King is like a really good deck for a player to pick up because it's like, yeah, no, this is just like for a couple of times, this is fun. But for somebody like us that literally lives, breathes, and <laughs> sleeps, lies over in Terra, uh, Poor King is not what we as players are looking for. And we are definitely for the more intricate, clever, clever champions, so to say, like Nila, Gianna, Volibear. Yeah, the, the Poro King is a. Uh, it's just very, hey, I'm going to play these Poro units. You kind of know exactly what's going to happen. You just need to roll what special snacks they roll and be like, okay, please don't get the one that they need. Um, yeah. My Poros are going to be very big. You need to stop me before they get to that point because once they are big, you cannot answer them. It's, yeah. it's over, basically. I like that. Um, I do like that, but not long term. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so. Stand out cards. Let's both pick three. Uh, okay. Well, unless unless you really had like a very long list, uh, but I think okay. picking three no, and no, just no. okay. Let me, wait, uh, let me let me look at the cards. All right, you can think about it. I'm just going to pick one right away. Uh, one card I would really like to talk about is that wildfire, and I'm sure this one was on your list too. But this is one we cannot skip. So I am just going to say that this card right now is played in decks that have a good to decent win rate. Um, it feels a little oppressive to play against. And I think this is the only card that if it were to get a little more popular, a little better, refined, this is the only card that would make this expansion a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. Um, because you know that if a card like this gets popular, everybody's going to be playing it. And that is going to get rough real fast. Now, I don't know if it's good enough for that because it feels counterable. But um, like we're a week in right now, right? And this is the one that I am very cautious about. So I don't play Hearthstone. I think you do. Yeah, I, I Ignite. Yeah. Y yeah, Ignite. Mm -hmm. I So I saw Ignite and I looked at it and was like, huh, that seems like the correct cost that this card should be. It should be a two mana slow deal two increase yeah. by one and i thought you know what if that came into the game and that's the nerf it's gonna be memed upon but i think it's the, i think is what should happen um yeah. like you said in the decks that so that for people that don't know the decks that play wildfire they run two spells they run wildfire and they run rejuvenating breeze and yeah. what you do is rejuvenating breeze is a five mana burst heal three draw two spells and the chance that when, when you play that deck you only have two spells so there's a chance that you could double draw wildfire or you can draw a wildfire and another rejuvenating breeze and you just chain along until eventually your opponent is dead right the deck also runs about 20 million one drops and every single time my opponent goes hey look it's i have the even token turn two saboteur 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 and i'm there with a <laughs> single one drop going i've just lost the game yeah, exactly. It, it, it's also just aggro units. Also, I'm going to read out the card. I realize we should be doing this from last time, but now we caught it in time. So Wildfire is the one mana from Noxus. Deal one to the enemy Nexus. Increase by one for each other Wildfire you play, you've play. you played. And you create a Wildfire in your deck. So the important part that Marshall mentioned here is um, this deck, this aggressive deck, only runs cards um, that are either very aggressive and do Nexus damage and cards that draw spells. And because there are very few spells in the deck, that will always be the wildfire. So it is not uncommon at all to just get aggro down early, and then somehow they instantly just get access to three or four wildfires. And that as well, that is a decimate and uh, and more. Yeah, the uh, like I said, the, I think this card, if you've got to nerf it, you've got to turn it into Ignite from Hearthstone, which would be a two mana deal two, increased by one. Um, just because then it's more expensive. It's an increase by 100%, which when you put it like that, it's, very, it, it's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, for a card to have its time to shine, I'll let it do its thing. I think we all agree that this card's going to get hit in the future. Yeah. Listen, people, if you want to go and have your fun, you go and do that. If I see metas with this, I will be bringing my Mage Seeker Jr. and we will be <laughs> taking you to the Gulag. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Mage Seeker Jr. in a deck that only draws this type of spell is not getting removed <laughs> ever. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna play like Retreat Return. I'm gonna re like, oh wait, I can't play Retreat Return in my. Yeah, no, no. Deck. <laughs> no. I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna play um, Scrutinizing Sergeants. I'm gonna summon as many 
juniors on the board, so you cannot have your game plan. Mm. You're gonna have to answer me before you can have some fun. <laughs> uh, based. All right. Yeah, that's that's wildfire. So, what is a yeah. card you would like to talk about? Okay, so we'll we'll save my favorite one for last, but I think one that we have to speak about is Sky Splitter, which is the Volibear card. It's the two mana. Oh, first. the one three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah, plus yeah. one plus three. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So here you go. So for, for audio listeners, this is a Freljord card. This is a two mana burst. It's elemental. Um, it's called the Sky Splitter, and it's given ally plus one plus three this round. This is just troll chant, but better. It's weird because troll chant saved you more health, but this card is insane. Yeah. Like Freljord were like, hey, we're gonna get rid of one shrunk protection spell we're gonna rotate it and then a couple months later you're getting you're getting it back and it's like huh this. <laughs> uh i i i really enjoyed that this card as it exists by the way because uh it's it's clearly very powerful this is the kind of card that failure needs to not be a region that is memed upon uh i i fully mean that there is now an actual active reason to pick failure as a secondary region and before this card that didn't really exist. Like maybe three sisters, but even then, why am I going for three sisters when I can just go to like I don't know, uh, <laughs> Shadow Owl for Soul Harp or something, right? And that's like the worst option I could have picked. So I, I, um, I'm very glad that this exists. I, I think it makes Freljord a much more interesting region to play because it has actual unit protection. Yeah. The uh, so there's one card that I, I want to have like as an honorable mention, which is Iskyla, Figurehead of the Deep. Um, Mm. She double. She doubles all. Uh, she is a six mana four four from Piltover and Zorn. When you play an elemental spell or skill, copy it with the same targets. Yeah. This is elemental. If you go P and Z and you run this card, you play Figurehead of the Deep for six with three mana banks or two mana banks. Your opponent goes, oh, "I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna ping it. It's only got four health." No, no, no. <laughs> she has ten. You're gonna have to deal with a ten attack unit. The only way you can deal with her is straight killing it or you got to be lucky with the sunburst. Like, she's yeah. insane with this. But elementals, very interesting mechanic. I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. Me um, too. But we haven't this even... card... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, we'll talk about elementals mm -hmm. when, um, but in, a, in, a, in a bit. But yeah, this card, very good. I think is exactly what Freljord needed. Agreed, agreed. Uh, I'm so happy to see... There's really not much to say about it. This is not like we're talking about a two mana burst, give plus one plus three. We're talking about what does this mean for Freljord? And this is a game changer. I, I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the future of Freljord. But with that said, I uh, as my card, I will actually pick just a... Let, let's just pick a Chinchilla, Figurehead of the Deep, the six <laughs> mana, four, four. When you play an Enzymental spell, spell or skill, copy it with the same targets from Piltover. Um... This card is really interesting because it is, again, like spell doubling in Piltover, but it is specifically for elemental cards. And no, I, I think this card's cool. It's a six mana four four. It does stuff. But I really I, I would like to talk a little bit in a context of this card about elemental spells and what they've done for the game so far, because, again, I am just kind of blown away by the addition of elemental sp spells and how non restricting they are for decks. It's just like, OK, some of them have this text. Some of them synergize really well with either uh, using the Luigi, uh, the, the Lug, uh, the whatever, the five mana <laughs> card that gives elemental spells plus one damage, or you double it with this. There are so many applications that do really, really cool things. And I'm here for it, man. I um, It doesn't matter what direction you go. You will find a way to amplify your elemental spells and do really, really cool things with it. Yeah, there's a, this card... There's, there's something wrong with it. There's no golden border around it, and that that icon, it, it's not it's not yellow. This, this is a champion, guys. This is actually the newest champion that they forgot to make as an LOR exclusive. It's an insane card. So yeah. in the early access, me and Biotech were playing a lot. Biotech was playing this card, and I'm like, oh, I don't have an answer to this card. Surrender. Like, yeah. th there's just times where if you if you know the opponent's deck and they play this and you don't have an answer, there is you're just dead. Like. You need to kind of be so aggressive in some decks that they can't afford to play this. Yeah, we're kind of going through like the motions right now. That happens every time. We 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 started on day one and two of the expansion, and Chinchilla was everywhere, and it was like, oh, this card is really powerful. It's probably going to shape the meta. Then you know people start playing more aggressive, and we're not seeing this card as much anymore right now. But you already know that in a week when the meta like shifts and settles later, this card is going to come back. This will just pop up every now and then, and it will just be extremely, extremely powerful. So I sent you a deck 
when when you were streaming, you did oh, your 12-hour yeah, yeah. stream. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was in work. I was like, I'm going to throw Sunny Stream up on the side while I work. And I started thinking to myself, I was like, elemental spells. And I've sent you a, I sent you a DM, by the way, on Discord, if you want to pull up all of the, uh, the elemental spells, because I made a graphic for the LOR report, because Riot did one that was wrong. It didn't have everything on it. <laughs> so this is everything, and it's in order of regions. Um, oh, if you right-click the image, you can open the image up on its own as a... Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So yeah, these are all in a region based. So Noxus is together, Froyods are together. Um It's not quite there, there. It's not Later. quite there, but okay, we, there people, people can see the thing. Okay. If you if you can if you people can spot icon from a distance though. So. There's a mm -hmm. lot of frostbite spells here. And um doubling frostbite spells, not good. Apart from a few. Shatter is a one mana deal four. That's pretty good. That's flock. That's a slow flock. Yeah. That that's a good card. We know flock was good in the past. Um Another thing that's quite good, Winter's Breath. Hey, opponents just played on turn seven. I've just played Chinchilla on turn six. <laughs> well, good, say goodbye to your board. You don't have anything anymore. <laughs> and even if you have a spell shield, that spell shield unit has zero attack now. So e the, the spell shield unit is alive, but it's still not doing anything. Yeah. It's zero attack. Um, now, the favorite one, which is what I sent you the deck for, is uh, that, that, small, that small wolf. Uh, it's called... Frozen in Fear? Frozen in Fear, that's, that's, it, that's the name. Mm. And every single time you frostbite a unit, it gains one attack. Yeah, that so the zero the frostbite... four over on Wolf. Yeah. yeah, it's a one mana zero four that just has an aura. If, mm. Even if it gets recalled, it, you still play it and it still has the growing stats. It grows over the game. The thing that makes this deck so cool with that, this specific card is that you cast it, you frostbite twice. It doesn't matter if you frostbite it as zero mana unit that's already frostbitten, you've definitely frostbitten it again. So you can play this and immediately, a four mana with Chinchilla on the board, you get a 2-4 and a 2-4 with Overwhelm. And then every single time you cast a uh, Frostbite card, which every single Frostbite card in the game is uh, is elemental, Yeah. Yeah. everything's getting frozen. Now, another one that I was thinking of, and I don't have it in this image, and I just want to double check something. I'm fairly sure... There's another card that is Frostbite. The the five mana one with a weapon. Oh, um. Uh, it's a cultist. Unforgiving Cold? Unforgiving Cold isn't an elemental, and I'll tell you why. I realized this the other day. If you haven't equipped, you're frostbiting four units for five mana. <laughs> yeah, that's that's And I was good. like, that's kind of broken, and I've just realized it's not an ele elemental. It yeah. probably should be, like flavor-wise, and th th that's probably why it's not. They probably play tested that. That that um, could easily be why, yeah. Mm. But yeah, elemental spells. I'm really happy that they went went back and introduced the tag to other cards that existed. Um, it, it's just so funny. Like, for example, un I love that they gave it to Malphite's uh, Unstoppable Force. Just, yeah. You can stun you can stun them twice if you want to with Chinchilla on the board. Yeah, why the hell not? I did that with Seraphine, and uh, you know, yeah, uh, value through the roof, man. <laughs> but yeah, but, it, yeah, it feels nice that the elemental spells aren't just like we we only do like this one thing. Elemental spells aren't just like I do damage in a specific way. It's all it's like all across the board, and the way you can manipulate them and amplify them is really, really, really well done. I'm uh, I'm enjoying the experimentation, especially with like the the Gale Song flock. I think doubling that up also feels really nice because it it like increases the stats from itself. So yeah, every, yep. everything just it, wor it works great. It's nice. Yeah, G Gale Song flock is probably secretly OP. I think that that card is very good, especially if you get it doubled up. It's five mana draw two, yeah. summon X, X and. <laughs> It's, it's ten tens, very yeah. Yeah, ten tens, eleven elevens, twelve twelves. By the time you're casting it, sometimes. Yeah. Um, very scary. Very. very if we move good. on to if we move on to my my favorite card. All right, I, I think I'll I find Demacia or Sharima. You can find Demacia. So, oh yeah, Sharima. So, we'll speak very briefly about General of the Dunes before we move over to this. Okay, one. So, okay. General of the Dunes, as a daybreak card, it's okay. It's mm -hmm. quite good for if you're looking to do some positive trades. Um, Daybreak don't really have anything good on four mana. Um, Leona's five mana, yep. so <clears throat> it's there. It gives you just something to play on curve. For elites, this is good as a two off. Um, most elite cards don't have an effect, so a and they're normally same stats as the cost. 
So three mana three three, five mana five five. So this is a four mana four four. It can become a four mana five five. Um, and then daybreak, or when you activate another daybreak, grants the weakest enemy vulnerable. So it has a tag. So you can just hey, I want to, I want that weak unit, and I'm gonna use my battle smith, or I'm gonna use something small. Just get, maybe use it with my garen. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a good trade that you can't kill my garen on. Um, yeah. It is weakest. It's a decent card. I think this card yeah, is like actually like turbo nuts. By the way, I think it's very oh, very good. Um, I, I don't think there is a a, a good Le good enough Leona deck right now, or it hasn't been made yet. But I think if there is, this card would be absolutely like crazy in it, in my opinion. Also, I don't know, um, if you have Leona and this card on the board, you're stunning the strongest and giving the weakest vulnerable. Uh, of course, you have to get to that point, but, you know, Targon, they have beefy units. It's not unheard of that they can just protect themselves, and I think this card goes absolutely crazy in it. Yeah, the uh, you play this on four, Leona on five. Yeah, yeah, like you said, your weakest one's going to get attacked. Your strongest one's being pushed. Just sit down, and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in a later date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, this, this card is good, but this is not the card I want to talk about. Now, this card, I've I posted a screenshot... Turn mm -hmm. four, I had three of these on the board. I had a 3-3 three, three Cythria, and I had the 3-3 the three, three that discounts itself. Oh, yeah. That was now a 4-4. Four, four. I had a board full of 3-3s three, and 4-4s four, on turn four. And I'm like, huh? How is this card? Like, maybe it was a bit of a high roll, but like, this card is very good. This card is very good. So, this card is, for audio listeners, is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two Elite from Sharima, which was the new revelation that Riot are branching out the elite tag to different regions um so we got two in sharima uh, and sharima also these cards also share daybreak well, this one is daybreak draw a copy of itself so it's very similar to zenith blade where if you play it you get you pull the card from the deck if you have one there the reason why this card is insane is two things you can go wide very fast which elites wants to do mm -hmm. and it draws itself which it, it's a good card you only need one. If you mulligan and get one, you're basically loving life. Because elites don't have draw at all. And this is drawing. And it's thinning out the deck so that you don't get any low-cost units. I want my late-game cards to be Jarvan, Garen, Champion Trend. If it's not one of those three, I don't want it. <laughs> this card is perfect. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also I think it's a game changer for uh for elites and it also finally makes the elite players like yourself uh branch out to other regions instead of just playing 40 <laughs> demacia cards there are other regions you can play nobody's stopping you right like yeah we'll, we'll we'll nudge him in the right direction we'll we'll give some elite to a different region um daybreak i i, I think it's awesome that they're doing it to me that's the most interesting part just the fact that elite and daybreak is now also in shirima it's the same with uh last year when the webmasters were released we finally got dual region tags on stuff that isn't just Bandal City. And yeah, just opening the game up a little more on older archetypes uh, is sweet. And I hope that continues happening because it completely breeds new life into these archetypes that weren't interesting anymore to a uh, majority of the players. Yeah, I just want to add as well for Daybreak, this card is kind of insane. If you don't draw any early game and you happen to have Ravoon and Leona yeah. on the board, you draw this, it stuns a unit, it draws itself. You can play that for a daybreak effect. It draws another daybreak card. <laughs> very it, like in the decks that this wants to be played in, this card is very strong. Yeah. I'd be I'd be surprised of how they nerf it, but I do suspect it will hit a nerf really? if it continues to have its dominance. This card is insane. I love I, this card. I think it's good, but I I don't see it being game warping. It's a two mana two two. And with mm. the elite and daybreak tag, which are both decks that want to play units. So if you're trying to beat a unit-based strategy, this card will just, like, also be beat in that same sense. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd be I'd be, I'd be interested. Um, I don't see Listen, it being that good. The community cried when the dog was an elite, and that was because we're getting our discounts too fast. This is also doing a discount because it's sub-3 cost. This card is insane, trust me. We will see this get nerfed somehow. All right. I'll, you can mark right, my words. All right, all right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn my head upside down for an entire <laughs> stream. Or actually, like, upside down for an entire stream. If that, if that happens, I don't I don't personally see it. Uh, wait, we just talked that there might be, like, people from right listening. Okay, right? Please don't nerf this card. I'm going to look like an idiot for an entire stream. Don't, <laughs> don't do not Don't it. nerf it as well. Don't, I don't want to see it nerfed. I want to enjoy my elites. <laughs> We're both losers if this gets nerfed. Let, let it be the way it is, all right? We, we love Daybreak elites. Yeah, all right. yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so last card, probably not entirely surprising. I would like to talk about Head Mistress Telsey, which is a five mana Noxus card. Also five, five stats, which is incredible because the effect is a little niche. Allied attack and support effects activate an additional time. So I, first of all, think this is a really cool effect. Second, getting those premium stats for effects like this that can be very powerful, but don't see play outside of very specific card archetypes, uh, I think is really, really cool. And it makes them, it makes it so much easier to actually build deck with, because I think a year ago, this would have probably been like a three, four or something. And now it's a five, five. So it, it doesn't feel bad to actually put in your deck. Yeah, I uh, I watched a video today. So ah. for those that don't know, Sunny Sunny did a video today. It was uh, Volibear Samira, but they were the cards really to be that Volibear was, but Samira was just there on the sides. Mm -hmm. Headmistress Telsey was there, and she was doing her part <laughs> to uh, to make some very large units, uh, both from Marauders and Atakan, which is a card that you definitely do not see often. Yeah, yeah. So it had. Uh, I think the coolest thing about it, like there were Legion Marauders, which is like, yeah, this is like. It's like the baseline for the value you want to get from Telsey, but then you had Anaka as the Darkin. The attack yeah. is I pull the unit from the deck. So Anaka will literally pull two units with has Mr. Telsey. If you have two on the board, it pulls three. And then it has Atakan, which can also be pulled from Anaka, which then counts itself and all the other units on the board to grant Atakan attack. And then it does it again because of Telsey and it counts its own attack. So it literally doubles its own attack. If you do that multiple times, things get crazy really, really, really fast. And I thought it was less of a meme deck than I thought it was going to be. It actually like consistently popped off. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's competitive. I don't think it's like a meta deck. But it, as far as like meme decks that I upload go, this one was actually like, it was kind of holding its own really well because of the Legion Marauders just being able to like hold the line in the early too. And, you know, Samira, but that's Samira. Yeah, it looked like you were having a very fun time playing the deck. I'm not gonna lie. I was. You were, you were laughing. You were laughing quite a lot. Yeah, it, it's it, dude. Just just like having a Telsey and an Anaka on the board, and that's like okay, this is what this is what I have. This is what I can throw at you. You attack, and then suddenly Anaka pulls Anaka. That Anaka then also gets two summons because of Telsey. Suddenly you have like a six wide board attacking with a three hundred attack Anaka. Yeah, no, that's that was funny. It, it was cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's just weird to see such high stats on this card. Like, yeah. the I guess it is, they've tested it and they don't think it's too oppressive. Yeah. But yeah, all I'm going to say is, but if this card is oppressive, these stats are going down. There's no way to stay in a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. It'll go up to 5-4, yeah. then a 4-4. Four, four. Then if it keeps getting, still see meta presence, we'll see those stats drop. I was very surprised to see the stats of this when it first got released. I agree. The, the one thing, last thing I want to mention about this <clears throat> is that it is currently bugged, I'm assuming with Ash. Ash has an attack effect that says I frostbite the strongest unit. So you would assume that it works like uh, other cards, like um, Unforgiven Cold, where it frostbites the strong unit twice, or two different strong units, but Ash actually just frostbites the same unit twice. So there's a there's like a an animal in my room. <laughs> your, your face. Oh god, yeah, I can't I, I'm looking into the light. Wait, hold on. Anyway, so Ash. Ash, she's bugged. Um if the Ash gets fixed, which I imagine it's on their radar, uh, the Riot seems to be really um, doing a really good job with listening to bugs. Uh, we'll get to bugs in a bit because we've got a section on bugs that we need to talk about. Um, but yeah, the the Riot are doing quite well listening to bug reports at the moment. So you report a bug, as long as the, the right person is being added on Twitter with evidence, they're noting it down, the, the research is going into it to fix it. Uh, so I imagine the Ash bug will be fixed soon. And if it does get fixed, I can see this deck doing quite well. Agreed, agreed. It's just Ash LeBlanc with Telsey. All right. Yep. Uh, my last card. Uh, honestly, just the Explorer cards. The Explorer cards are insane. I know we talked about them before, but like you have to talk about how good they are. Like mm -hmm. they, they they broke Region Pie because some of the regions weren't supposed to have all of these effects. Like Demacia wasn't supposed to have healing and landmark destruction. Like we had capture for landmarks. Like we weren't even there. You can destroy it. It's just nope. It's being jailed. You can have it back when you've been a good boy. <laughs> um, but yeah, these cards are insane. I've made some posts. That Spectral Surveyor card is insane in Kale with Mahira. You put a Yumi on it and it's like, oh, you need to answer this now. Um, insane cards. Like, I don't think we need to go over this again, but these cards are insane. Yeah, no, they are. I think uh, like the, the standout here is really like the fact that Demacia and Freljord both now have very good landmark removal. And a 3-mana 2-3 with Challenger, 
It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. And getting an extra card on top just makes this premium beyond belief. I think the Scholarly Pioneer is the biggest game changer. So while all of them are good, this is the one that actively gives you gives those regions something that they didn't have before. And that's uh, it's real good. Yeah, I'm waiting for Eternal Season where I can kick out my uh, Lauren protege and I can put him in instead because he's one <laughs> less health and he does something a lot better. Yeah, very true. All right, um, so really quickly, let's go over, you said bugs? Oh, so we let's look at the, so we got bugs and we need to talk about cosmetics. Yeah. Um, so. so we can do cosmetics first since we'll see these first on the, uh, on this wonderful uh, patch notes. So, oh, but this one's had a bit of controversy. I don't know if you've been uh, paying attention. Yes. But uh, Riot had to actually make an announcement on this one. So um, there was, I saw someone on Twitter post and they were like, oh my God, I cannot believe uh, LOR are getting Cov and Janna first. What, what, is, what is going on? They, they maybe, maybe worded it a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. um, and I literally took no notice to it because I was like, this person is, they clearly don't understand what happens in the game industry and they're just someone ha having a run. Listen, I rant sometimes on Twitter. I'm not going to interact with it. I then come back the next day. There's an official riot statement on it. There's there's people arguing within the community. I'm like, it's literally that meme of the guy walking in with a pizza and everyone's fighting in the room. And I'm <laughs> that, just like, what that's truly <laughs> from community. Yeah, yeah, with, with, with the pizza and the whole room is on fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what has happened? So I had to go and do my research. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And it's literally just the fact of people from League were pissed off to say the least that we had this amazing january design and got this really cool coven skin and they don't have it and it's like they're two completely different games we just share a character like yeah our our team was like hey let's because let's be honest there is only one skin that Bully Bear could have released with. We're going to get to it later. There is only one. They had to pick it. That was the only skin I can guarantee. I haven't spoken with anyone at Riot. They had to pick that skin. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, how do we make a skin line around this skin? This was what they came up with. And I think the strategy for the team now is that every expansion, the champions are getting skins. So, I it hope makes, so. It's, the, it's the only thing that makes sense. So this is why we got this skin. Yeah. This is my big brain... No, I, I, I fully agree. Um, yeah, the, 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 the Coven skin line is, is like just by itself is an amazing skin line. I really enjoy everything that it comes out with. And it's just it's the best Volibear skin. Let's be honest here. It's the it's like it has the connection with the lore, too. So I'm glad yep. that they picked that one. And I'm glad that they released other banger skins around that one. And yeah, I mean, look at this. It's <laughs> it's incredible. Like the level up, too. I uh I think it's a, it's a great skin, and I really enjoy playing it in every single Janna deck, even though sometimes the flavor is a little bit off. I also really like the the regular Nila and Janna, but this one is just, man, the theming, the art, it's gorgeous. Yeah, the, to be fair, there's quite a lot of decks that use Volibear and Janna, uh, mm -hmm. or like the, some iteration of the new champions. So the fact that they all work kind of with together, and you can use yeah. the skins, excellent, I like it. Same here. Yeah, the theme uh, here is the Volibear skin. Yeah. So, so for people that don't know, we're looking at, uh, for audio listeners. This is a thousand pierced Volibear, which there's quite a bit of uh, history behind the skin. Uh, to dumb it down, Volibear, when he was getting his rework in League, the team wanted to completely redesign Volibear to the thousand pierced Volibear because he was supposed to be this eldritch horror character that the Ursine pray to. That's why all of the Ursine cards in Legends of Rune Terror are all like crazy they're supposed to be like this guy is give, making him look that way it makes sense like mm -hmm. the story was there and they were like we can't do it because people are not going to see the old volibear again yeah so they made volibear stay with his original like white and blue and they're like hey we're gonna give them this skin then they were like okay this is what the when you like imagine like for example in real life people will say okay my god and then they would have like the the christian god and the muslim god and the, the uh, jewish god and all the different religions they all depict a different version of the god different people would then be volibear different ways and this is how people would see him that way um unfortunately well, no i still think it's canon actually um it just happens that the coven skin line uses the one canon way to look at volibear mm -hmm. um and it is a I think it's one of the skins that, as a specifically law skin for like the story of League of Legends, I think it's one of the most positively 
like accepted skins um and i think it was the slam dunk only choice that they could only have to release volley bear with um which is why i think we got coven for this expansion yeah yeah well said uh great great summary of uh, the lore behind it too uh, I'm, I'm super happy to see this in the game and honestly if it was anything else i think i would have been a little bit disappointed i'm sure they would have had like something great to go with it anyway but i'm just really happy that it's this one uh, and then we have the yep. Nila. It does feel like a little bit as like the odd one out, but um, I still think it's a good looking skin, but definitely the least one out of the new champions. Again. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I just think that's uh, I, I just I don't know. It should maybe doesn't maybe fit the, the skin line as much, but it, it looks nice. The level up animation that you can see here, it's incredible. The sound effects with it, really nice. The whipping effects specifically with that level up animation, very crisp. I yeah. like it a lot. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the same could be said about Aatrox, in my opinion. It's also, like, it's it's great that Aatrox gets a skin, but this is also a skin in League of Legends, the uh, Lunar Eclipse Aatrox. But I feel like it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit bland. It's not... It's hard to beat OG Aatrox anyway, so it's, you can't really blame for that. There's, there's a certain champions I can I can agree there. That, um, you, it's very hard to beat the base skin. Yeah. Um, for example, in... Rune Terror already, I think that the original Vein skin is very hard to beat. The fact that we got the Sentinel Vein, yeah, insane. Like, I just don't think you're gonna beat that with a skin. Agreed, yeah. Uh, uh, I haven't seen this one yet, the Sejuani one. I, I've seen it once in game, um, but yeah, I think Sejuani, I think it's just nice that some of the champions that don't have skins, especially older ones like Sejuani, mm -hmm. finally getting a skin. Yeah. Um, it was one of the questions that will. A small bit as well. You haven't watched the interview yet, so for people that don't know, I got to interview Eric Shen, who did, uh, who basically handles all of co all of the cosmetics. And I was supposed to ask him a question about how come champions get multiple skins when some champions don't get a skin at all. Um, for example, like Leona's just got her like third skin, and same with Diana, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we have Sejuani, who now gets her release skin. So I was I was going to ask him that question. Hopefully I get and get a chance to ask him that again. It's a great but question. Just 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 for a base skin like this, I think it's very nice. Uh, I don't personally like Sejuani's level one uh, and level two base, uh, and I think this is a very nice skin. I, I like. I actually this. agreed, full agree. I I don't really love the way it looks in Rune Terror either, but this one, this skin, I would jam every single time, no question asked. Yep. Uh, I think the next one. This, this is oh, my bread and butter. The kill, the kill one is so good. Yeah, this might be my favorite I, one on Ironic. I mean, I don't know if it's because I don't know if it's because I just like Kale more than probably the average person. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this skin is so good. I messaged <laughs> Riot because I don't know if you got to do this post production. There's, there was a glitch with the framing of the first card. Oh, I saw if that. This was the, if this was the like, so yeah, if this was the frame here, like her head was like. Here. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so why is she trying to hide from me? Th this is a trend that's been going on. The, a lot of the portraits, when they're cards on the board, are very zoomed in on their face. Like you don't get to see their full body. Like this entire kill art has so much going on. It's so beautiful, and they just entirely zoomed on in on only her face. And they've confirmed that this looked like a bug, so they will be zooming out the art a bit more, so you can actually see uh, yeah, more of the like amazing robe or dress or whatever you want to call it that kill has here. Yeah. Uh, I think the word it's looking for is armor, but yeah, sure. We'll call it a robe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Her nightgown. It looks yeah, beautiful yeah. here. <laughs> uh, right. But yeah, this that skin, amazing. And then yeah. we move on to the, the event pass ones, which um a bit weird, personally, that we do get Leona and Diana again in the event pass skins. Yeah, um, same with the Corrupted. We had Corrupted in the event pass, too. Yeah, uh, but honestly, I don't think they're bad skins. I think they're... Uh, I did this Leona skin. This one's very good. I like this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But but yeah, I think that I think for event pass skins, the event pass has always been the uh, like best value for money. Yeah. Especially with the fact that we're getting three skins now. Like you, you paid the same price as one skin, and you're getting three. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're not getting level up animations for them, but like that you're getting value. There's something about these skins that makes them look different than the other. They look calmer, like there's less going on and they're more focused on the character. I, I'm not artistic at all. I don't know anything about making art like this, but uh, there, there's a different vibe to it. Um, sadly, we can't really show that to the audio listeners, but um, the, just imagine, like I'm sure you've seen them in game at this point. It's just like there's there's like action poses and you can see the Nila like fighting and setting, but these are just very calm, like... Leona and Diana are just kind of standing there, and it's it's really really good. 
Uh, and then the center one, which is also in the pass, is, is a lot more, you know, action pose. He's shooting her gun. Uh, I actually quite like the skin. I think it's much better than her Star Guardian skin. Yep, I agree with that. I think it's just for an event pass skin, it's value for money. I'm not. I probably will be running it if uh, if I ever play a center deck. Yeah. Very rare that I do. But um, yeah, I, I'd probably run it. Yeah, this is the like. I don't care much for Senna. I think he's very frustrating to play against in Rune Terror and League of Legends. But this is the kind of skin that makes you go like, hey, maybe I should try Darkness again for this one time, just because his skin exists. And if that's the case for players like us, I think that's a job well done. Uh, yeah. And then we have some card packs, also just extremely good looking. I really enjoy the card packs in the game that they've been doing. Oh. The We're emotes are, uh, yeah, well, whatever. Well, 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 and then there's well, this well, one, the Volley Smash. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Literally, I think this is the best moment. I think the the versatility of this emote is so good. You're you you've just blown out your opponent and you're killing them. You're volley bear smashing. Your opponent has <laughs> just blown you out and you're about to lose the game. You volley bear smash. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's perfect. I love his goofy little face. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then finally we have the icons, and there is an Aurelian soul icon here, which is apparently a skin we're getting in the future. This is like. God Eater, Aurelian Soul, I believe the official name is, or something? Sun Eater. Sun You're Eater. Close. All right, close, close enough. Uh, um, I love so, it. Looks really good. Yeah, the um, it is coming later in the thing. You can see, and there's, for the for the audio listeners, there's a bit of text. There's an editor's note under the icon uh, that just basically says that the Aurelian Soul skin is coming out later in. Well, it says in a later patch. Yeah. So whether that be the balance patch coming up or in the variety set, we don't know. But we'll. Uh, We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's then about we it, got really. The, yeah, yeah the we icons. got this one. If we scroll down, you can see the gauntlet pins here. Oh, yeah, uh, the volleyballs. Yeah. The volleyball one. Honestly, second best one after Kale, I think. Yeah, I quite like them. I think they're good. But um, but yeah, I think for for cosmetics, we're um, that, that we're we're done for for cosmetics. Very very good for this uh expansion, personally. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Very good. Uh, okay, so there's one final thing about bugs that we want to go over and that... Uh... Yeah, so there's, there's quite a few bugs with uh, logging in right now um, th that seems to be affecting EMEA yeah. more than other regions. Yeah. Um, so it, a lot of people are having uh, login issues, whether it be... For me, I can't play Gauntlet. Like, Gauntlet just keeps throwing errors at me. Um, people can't even sign in on mobile. Um, it seems to only be affecting EMEA, EMEA as well. Um, or like pr it's primarily focusing on that. Uh, so yeah. I'm a bit unsure to, to what's going on there. But um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit annoying. Uh, I understand that Riot doesn't work on the weekends. So there's so many days they can they can only work. And the expansion came out on Wednesday. So they've really only had like four days to work on it. And they need to find the bugs. They need to fix it. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit upsetting. However, there is a positive light to, to do this on. There's the potential that the player base has grown a little bit since the yeah. expansion came out. And the servers are on fire because they had to downsize them a couple years ago. And they're like, oh yeah, we don't think the player base is going to go back to its uh, release size, which was probably millions upon millions of players. And mm -hmm. now that we sit just a couple... I, I think it's known that we have a couple of million players a month. Um that play Path of Champions, to PvP, to whatever the options that are available. Um, and yeah, I think that with the, with the expansion, with the January design, with the Volley Bear, um, maybe the Neela enjoyers that were like, oh, I, I'll go and try Neela out in LOR. Um, yeah. I think the surface did catch fire a little bit, <laughs> which yeah. is, it, it's good. Uh, there's also like, you have the initial like, player interest was like oh hey new expansion this looks cool because of Janna, Volibear, whatever and then when they actually start playing and find out that the decks are like fun and that the champions are actually competitive they're more likely to stick around this time as opposed to last time as well i feel i, I think there's just more going on there's more stuff uh path of champions i think it's a gold mine really i have been sleeping on it for so long i'm really glad that i finally found out just how fun path of champions really is and how many fun videos you can actually make for it so i yeah i'm i'm fully into the uh path of champions uh just like what do you call it blue pill red pill uh whatever <laughs> i'm not gonna make that i i i finally took it uh but yeah it's, it's just really fun it's just there's so much to do and yeah hopefully new players are or returning players are feeling the same way and uh sticking around because of it yeah i i definitely think um I'm excited for competitive. So if we if we could just pull up the LOR report 
uh, calendar. We could just finish up with uh, like we did last time, looking at what's coming up in the uh, in the next few. Uh, that sounds good. Few weeks. So as you can see here, we're on the nineteenth recording this, which means the next big thing on the calendar is the LOR reports tournament, which is this Sunday. It's at one p.m. CET. It's going to be using the same format as the Runeterra Open, which will take place the, the week after. The 24th, yes. Yes, it's on the 24th of September. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be best of three. There's a hundred pound, uh, so it's like a 120 euro uh, prize pool. Riot has graciously given me 4,000 coins as well to give away to, uh, to like split between the top four. Um, basically, this is going to be used as like, hey, You've got a very big tournament coming up. Um, practice some of the competitive decks now. Like people have had time by Sunday to, to test decks, um, and hopefully we'll see quite a good turnout. Um, yeah. Just a lot of people are playing the game again. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to see the competitive scene for this season because last season it wasn't the best. Let's be honest. It, 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 Funnily enough, the Nico deck did win the last LOR report tournament, but <laughs> it, I think that was just because people didn't actually know how to build the, the new decks because we did it the weekend after the expansion. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then after the 24th, we have the Rune Terror open the on the yeah. 30th, which is um the last standard Rune Terror open before Worlds. So. Oh, okay. It will be very interesting to see what people bring. So that is the uh, the overlap onto to Sunday, and then um, I'm not unsure uh, if Riot are still doing these. But before every balance live, uh, before every balance patch notes, they supposed to do developer live streams where they basically reveal to everyone, hey, here's what we're balancing because this is the standard balance patch. They normally do quite a few. Normally they aim for about 30, I'd say. Some of them are good. Some of them are just like Whatever. timeline buffs. That's what we call them from now oh, on. Like right. they do nothing until you get them on timelines. Yeah. Um, but there's a potential that we get one on the Monday. If not, we'll get the patch notes on the Tuesday and the balance patch on the Wednesday. And then at the 20... Uh, sorry, sorry. The patch, uh, the balance patch is on the 11th of October. And then the next big thing after that is the World Qualifier Open, which is the last World Qualifier um, before yeah. Worlds. And that will be very interesting to see because people are going to be desperately trying. If you're, if you're interested in competitive like I am and some of the community, this World, Qualifi World Qualifier Open is going to be very interesting, not only because I think the meta is going to be very good and be mm -hmm. very interesting for deck building, Yeah, but... It's the last World Qualifier Open. People are going to be tryharding. You are going to see some <laughs> very interesting plays. You will see a lot of interesting plays, but you'll see a lot of misplays because people are going to be panicking that they can't get in and the stress will get to them. This will be an insane watch. Yeah, this is going to be the best uh, tournament before actual world, in my opinion, because there is so much on the line for so many players. They're going to have to bring their best out of the best decks and, you know, their A game to actually be able to compete with the others. So with the way the meta is right now, I am extremely excited about this one because it just looks like we got fun new cards that are able to compete and we're not just going to be running into old decks because the new champions can't compete. It's uh, th That's also going to be a banger. And that's all on the back of just this expansion being so fun and uh, with a high enough power level. Yeah, I uh, honestly, I think if we just do a quick recap, this expansion so far, mm. like I said, 9 out of 10. Um, I think they've absolutely smashed it. Um, yeah. I'm really excited to see what they do for a balance patch. I don't think we need to nerf that much, which is quite good, because yeah. that means we get to buff quite a lot of stuff. And buffs are the best thing, because we get to make some new decks. True. I 100% uh, agree. Uh, new, new decks being playable. Hopefully to newer archetypes that haven't been quite powerful enough. Like Jack, again, for like the third time maybe. He's still not <laughs> quite there. Uh, yeah, that, that would be awesome. Maybe even Nico or Poro King, just to give them some more exciting things to do. I'm hyped for it. I'm uh, I'm I'm very happy with this expansion. Yeah, I uh, well, like you said, it's. I just think the the new cards that got released, especially since the last Eternal, we had the um, the last variety set. Sorry, mm -hmm. them being played for the first time in standard now, and with the new cards from the expansion, just 
this expansion. It seems like it's going to be very fun. And yeah. we will see in uh, four weeks' time when we have the next podcast if things changed a bit. Because we'll, uh, like I said, there's, we've got four weeks until the next podcast, so things might drastically change. Yeah, so that means that in exactly three weeks from now, we are going to have the first balance patch. And that means that in four weeks again from now, one week after that balance patch, we are going to be back. We're going to give our thoughts on how the meta is shaping up the best decks. Uh, also reflecting on how this expansion looks after it's had some more time to breathe because right now everything looks amazing but one wildfire and one chinchilla uh, the six mana four four could easily just throw that all away uh, but for now that's gonna be it so thank you guys for watching listening and uh, we'll see you in exactly four weeks <laughs>